Go away, wind! Hello everybody and welcome to Catherovision, the show bringing you all the behind the scenes insight and technical analysis from the 2018 World Cup season. My name is Ben Cathro and today I'm in Andorra, a small principality in between Spain and France up in the beautiful Pyrenees Mountains for the fifth round of the Mountain Bike World Cup. Today is the setup day. Teams are getting everything ready, they're cleaning bikes, they're sorting things out. So I thought we'd pop around the pits, have a quick chat, see what everyone's up to. So Jordi, I think everyone knows that every World Cup people come around to get their uh, forks looked at, but what, what do you actually do? What is going on here? Uh, I mean, it depends. Basically, we just do a lower leg service. Yeah. We see the forks often enough that they stay in pretty decent condition. So it's just kind of making sure they're consistent race to race. Yeah. And what, why, why do you need to do a lower leg service each time? What's Consistency. What's, yeah. They, you want them to feel like new every race. And yeah. A lot of these guys are so picky that you can, you can definitely feel it. So I noticed you've got a couple of tubs with uh, different oils with the foam rings. What's that, that all about? So the air side and the older RC2 cartridge, which is sealed, you run the 20-weight gold, which is specifically designed as a lubricant. Yeah. The new grip cartridge, is designed to be able to ingest and purge oil so that it never changes pressure and keeps it consistent and that you have to run a damper fluid that doubles duty as damper and a lower leg lubricant uh -huh. so it's different cool between last world cup and this one what things do you do to the bike to get it ready for the next race what things do you change service you know um, sort out to be fair it's similar to any other world cup um we normally take the bikes apart every Every like race, so before full, the race, full, full everything. Down. Yeah. Bearings out. Uh, we check the bearings. Yeah. If they need replacing, we obviously replace them. They normally don't need replacing, mm -hmm. but you know, just uh, just make sure everything is perfect after the last race. Because obviously in the race run, you're pushing it to the max. So, yeah. You know, normally it's all good, but it's easier to find any any problems if yeah. you take it apart completely. Um, and obviously, yeah, just um, check the wheels, build some new ones if we have to. Yeah. <laughs> build some new tires, depending on the track. This is obviously going to be more likely that it's going to be some kind of a spike. Yeah. Um, looking at the weather. But yeah, apart from it's just, you know, job is normal. Yeah. What's your what's your record for uh, a full bike check, strip down, rebuild? <laughs> uh, I think it must be the day still when I wrenched for you, mate. <laughs> 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 probably, I think we could swap a frame probably within 20 minutes. What? We, if we have, you know, if there's two or three of us on, on the bike, we could do it in 20 minutes, I say. So news coming into this race, Greg Menard, who was out at the last round with an injury picked up in Fort William, was going to race this weekend, but he's not fully healed yet. So he's going to do a few runs so people can get a few photos, see him on track. That might change, but as of now, not racing. Other riders that have injuries and aren't sure if they're going to race are Jack Moir. He has uh, been talking with the surgeon and looking at x-rays from his collarbone. Isn't sure if he's going to race yet. We'll see. Hopefully he does. Obviously the big news last week was Gwyn hurt his thumb again. He's decided the injury is too bad. He needs to rest it. So he's gone back home to America to recuperate and will not be racing this weekend. Other notables are Dakota Norton and Miriam Nicole. Miriam's got a really badly bruised back and will not be racing this weekend. And Dakota Norton dislocated his shoulder again. So he's had to go home to recuperate from that. Lots of injuries from Val de Sol last week. So hopefully this week will not be as crazy. I don't know. We'll have to see what this track looks like. So let's go for track walk and see what's going on. Riders start in this big metal and plastic tube, dive out the start, straight down the ramp, straight into some high speed. You can see the edge of the ramp, it's got a lot of chew marks because the drop in is real steep and people clip their pedals when they're not paying attention. Dive out the start and go straight into this flat out straight. Looks reasonably smooth on camera, but it's actually got loads of roots and rocks and things to catch your pedals on. So it's actually quite a tricky straight to go fast on. And the ground's a bit more hard pack, but it's got this kind of like shaly stone top layer, which makes things quite loose. Also, there's a lot of this hard, sharp rock, which can slice tires and make things slippier. The upper part of the track is quite flat in terms of gradient. 
and it's all about just carrying speed, getting wide setups to allow you to uh, straighten out the turns and keep your momentum going. There are a few bits like this on the upper section where the track was either side of a tree. Riders have to decide where they want to slow down and turn up and go high or go low, which is a longer track, but allows you to carry more speed. So this bridge is one of the main... <laughs> my God, look at that solar panel, it's duct taped on. <laughs> Quality bit of engineering there. So this bridge is the first proper big man-made feature on the track. It takes the riders over the road and is covered in this rubber grip matting, which is very grippy in the dry, but in the wet, it <laughs> you might as well not have it very much. It is so slippy. So when it rains, because it's going to rain, the forecast is very similar to what we had in Val d'Isoli last week. For the first two days of practice and qualifying, heavy thunderstorms. Looks to be dry for race though. Oh, okay. Run, mate! Woohoo! <laughs> Woohoo! Ah! 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 On track walk, you always know there's an interesting bit because there's a queue of people waiting to look at it. Looking at a section like this, most normal riders would look and go, oh yeah, that line down there looks like it'd be nice and smooth and fast. But what top riders do is they look at it, look at the general shape of the track, not at the specific obstacles like these rocks and things. So the track goes up and then round a left-hander down there. So you want to set up wide for that left-hander. So riders at the World Cup will look for the lines that will allow them to carry the most speed. And the best line here, jump from there, land down there, flat out around the turn. Oh, just found the sneakiest line. Looks like track tapers have missed a trick here. They've left that wide open. Get the telescopic bars on, sneak through there, straight line for the boys. Found an interesting piece of rock here, which is really uh, indicative of the material that makes up the track. It's this like slate rock, real flaky, breaks up into small flat pieces, which uh, when they're layered on top of each other and loose, they're really slippy. So we've got a few line choices here. Look how deep and worn out the ruts are. It's like worn in by about a meter from the bank. And that is just from years of tires and water running down. On bits like this, the track naturally meanders along the curves of the hill, but riders will try and straighten things out by taking the straighter off-camber lines. The straighter you go, the faster you can go. After the slightly steeper, gnarlier traverse, the track dips down into some more bike parky terrain. So we've got some big berms, big booters in the open. So this stuff out here, you've probably seen loads of, because it's Real open, easy to film, usually got good light. I'm not gonna do too much here because everyone else films this stuff, but it is cool to look at. Big jumps. Chillin' boys. Pretty hungry, mate. This track walk's pretty stressfully. Eh? Mm. You're right. Savage, man. My legs are dead. I've been hunger struck. Whoa. <laughs> Yes, yes, no! no. <laughs> <laughs> so we got something new here. The track used to go to the left, but they've just no. opened. <laughs> but they've opened out the tape and opened it up a huge inside. We're interested to see riders experimenting with this one. Riders hit these turns so hard and generate so much g-force that they actually have to actively push the bike into the corner to stop themselves just crumpling. It looks really cool. It's going. Oh, oh, he did that. So the, the section of the track, the rock is vicious. Yes. Do you, can you do anything? Is there anything you can do to limit the chance of puncturing on this stuff? Uh, definitely. I learned the hard way a few years ago. I kept slicing tires and it's cause I was dragging my brakes. So just dragging it, put like too much pressure on the tire and it was just slicing it. So really just coming in and getting your braking spots, really important. I find and then letting go out. Cause slicing tires is no fun. <laughs> See my little friend here. This is the Red Bull mic. So when you're watching the live feed, 
you'll notice when the riders go past, the audio doesn't peak as they're going past the camera. It peaks as they're going past these mics and they've got them at every camera point. Not every camera point. See, even Brock agrees. <laughs> Track used to go through that way, but they've opened up a massive straight line, which is going to be insane the speed riders go through. John, obviously your main man is uh, back home resting up his thumb. So yeah. you've got a bit of a free weekend. Have you assigned yourself any new tasks or roles? Yeah, man, I'm the type of person who can't sit still or not do any kind of work. So um, just working on a little bit of suspension stuff with Fox, getting stuff mm -hmm. sorted out for when he does get back on the bikes and making sure that's all dialed. And then I'm gonna watch some practice tomorrow with uh, try to help Nico and Angel out if I yep. can, just watching different lines and stuff like that. And maybe might ride the downhill bike a little bit on a couple of the flow trails and stuff, just to work on a few other things that we're working on. Um, stuff that I like to know, you know, for myself to yeah. relay. And so riding that Iron's bike? Yeah. Cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sounds kind of weird, I guess, but yeah. yeah. I, I, I've, I've ridden his bike quite a few times, yeah. so. And I don't think he minds. <laughs> I know the guy who fixes it if I break it, so. <laughs> Yeah, other than that, cool. that's about all I'm up to. Staying busy, yeah. nice. So this track, as you work your way down, it starts off reasonably level, gets a bit steeper, a bit steeper, and now we're at the super steep. This is one of my favorite bits to watch in the live feed. It's got the bridge into the big compressions down there, and uh, it is insane. People gap off of it, big compression, full brakes into some tight turns. This bit is sick, but it's so steep. I can't believe people gap off this bridge. I've ridden a lot of steep tracks in my time, but walking down this lower section of the Andorran World Cup track, I was just like, it, it's so steep. I'm trying to picture how riders are actually able to hold some of the lines they, I know they do in race runs. It's seriously impressive. I need, to, I need to get some kind of a measure of how steep it is down this next bit. So we're trying to figure out how to show how steep this bit of track is. So we've got, we got John <laughs> trying to assist. John, what kind of angle are we looking at here? It's it's depending on your line, but we're looking anywhere from 30 to 50 degrees, 55 in a couple spots. I can stand straight almost and just reach out and touch bushes. So <laughs> it's pretty gnarly though, it's steep. My legs hurt. On this lower part of the track, with it being so steep, the most important things is speed control. Not like that. Because if you start to go too fast, pretty much you're out of luck. So riders have to be so good with their line, their body position, and getting the most amount of power out of the brakes without locking up too much. Easier said than done. About two years ago, the Endoran track used to have this rad shoot finish just coming out into the bottom grassy turns. People loved it, riders loved it. And then last year, they got rid of it. And everyone's like, oh, that sucks. What, the shoot was mint. And the, uh, the UCI were like, yeah, but the brain's damaged it, you know, it's not safe. And everyone's like, oh, come on. But look at the state of it. It's absolutely ruined. Look at that. Bubby's the section they built to replace that worn out chute. It's still mega steep. It gets really chopped out and braking bumped. So riders get super loose coming down into this barn behind me here. Still a, still a good bit. The track then pops out into these famous open grassy turns. Um, they've taped it really narrow. You used to be able to kind of do big high setups for the turns, but they've gone for the narrower taping this year. I'm not sure I agree with that, but still it's going to make it a challenging finish. And then finally, we have the last piece of the Andorran puzzle, the final drop. Whee! Off that drop, rail the turn, through the finish. That is the track walk here in Andorra, and it lives up to the hype. That thing is steep, it is gnarly, it looks amazing. Can't wait to get up and film the practice. So, that is it for today. If you like this video, hit the like button. If you want to see more, subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you tomorrow for practice day.
Before you go, one real quick thing. So you might know that these videos are only made possible thanks to people donating on Patreon. People that donate $25 can ask a question to anyone. So you could ask Aaron Gwynn what kind of ice cream he likes, or you could ask Rob Warner how he gets his beard so dark. But not, I'm not getting enough questions, so I'm opening it up to everyone. Anyone who's donated on Patreon or will donate on Patreon, submit a question through Patreon and I'll just pick the best ones. So get on that and I'll ask your questions. Nice. Thank you. Bye.